Susia, a Tier 7 premium cruiser that you get from completing the Limit Breaker campaign. And today I thought we would go over the setup of the ship and the commander and take it out in a standard battle and look at some highlights. So first let's look at the commander. It is Yamamoto. His base trait is right through. Increases the armor piercing capabilities of your cruiser shells. As for inspirations, I have Norman Scott, Directed Impact. It increases the shell grouping of your cruiser's main guns. The second inspiration is Gunther Luchin's Gimlet. Increases the AP shell damage of your cruiser. As far as the skills, the first skill is Beyond Range. It increases the main battery range of your cruiser. The second skill is Igniter. It increases the chance of causing fire with your cruiser's main or secondary battery. Third skill is Punch Through. Increases the armor piercing capability and maximum shell damage of your cruiser's AP shells. The fourth skill is Fixated. Increases the main battery shell grouping of your cruisers and improves the main battery accuracy for any ship type. The uh, legendary skill is Fully Packed and that gains one additional charge for each equipped consumable. I have Yamamoto ranked to 16.2. The dot .2 is the legendary rank. Let's look at the upgrades. First upgrade is Aiming Systems Mod 1. Second upgrade is Steering Gears Mod 2. Third upgrade is Steering Gears Mod 3. So here you see that I have a steering gears configuration on the Susia. The fourth upgrade is Torpedo Launchers Mod 3. Reduces the torpedo launcher reload time by 15%, though there's a risk of the torpedo launchers becoming incapacitated by 50%. Uh, in actual practice, whenever I've selected this upgrade in any of the other ships I have, this hasn't been a problem. Let's look at the loadout. See standard ammunition, HE explosive shells, AP shells, and torpedoes. The thing here that you can uh, configure is either sonar or defensive AA fire. And I've kind of left it on sonar because the defensive AA fire is really primarily used when you're in a battle with aircraft carriers and that's hit and miss. There's no way to tell if you're going to be in a battle with an aircraft carrier, and this is a big thing to give up for um, a 50-50 shot of not really knowing if you're going to be able to use uh, the AA defensive fire. So as far as the camouflage, I have a Type 9 permanent premium camouflage. It's maxed out to Grade 4. It comes with the ship. Sea detectability range is minus 4.5%, while incoming fire dispersion is plus 4.5%. I also have the uh, Susia flag, which comes as a milestone in the Limit Breaker campaign. Let's look at the stats. Survivability hit points is 38,000. Torpedo damage reduction is 10%, which isn't that much. Let's look at the artillery. You can see there's uh, 1,550 millimeter guns. There are five turrets of three guns in each turret. Firing range is 16.8 kilometers. Reload time is 10 seconds, which is pretty good. HE shell damage is 2,700 with a fire setting chance of 14%, which actually, it seems kind of low right here, but it is pretty good when you consider that you can get three salvos off in 30 seconds, which is about the reload time of a battleship. AP shell damage is 36.96 and you can still citadel other cruisers. Torpedoes. There are 16 torpedoes possible. There are four launchers of four torpedoes each. Reload time is a little over a minute and a half at 92.7 seconds. Maximum damage is pretty darn good at 17,233. Torpedo range is great. It's 11 kilometers though the torpedo speed is a little low at 56 knots. Here is your AA defensive uh, stats. It's all automatic. There's not really much you can do about this. So I kind of uh, usually gloss over it. Maneuverability is 
34.5 knots, which is uh, up there with destroyers, some of the faster cruisers, and even destroyers, I guess, will get up to 40 knots, but this is actually pretty fast. Rudder shift time is 2.7 seconds, which is really good, and I think that shows the um, double steering gear configuration. Concealment is 11.7 kilometers, detectability by sea. Let's look at the armor. Here you can see that the hull is primarily 25 to 26 millimeter thickness, which is, you know, it's pretty good. Uh, you can see down by the Citadel, though, there, it is some of the thicker, more protected armor, and the smokestack in the tower is um, 15 to 16 millimeter thickness. And let's take a look at the, uh, remove the armor and take a look at the Citadel. Okay, so you can see that the Citadel does sit above the water, which isn't good. But what is good is that it appears to be the thickest armor on the ship, so it is pretty well protected. And I, I'm going to wait and see how this ship handles in battle before I decide whether, whether this is really bad or not. For sure it's not good that the Citadel is above water, but at least it's protected by the thickest armor on a ship, so it, um, it might be okay. Let's take a look at the overview. Guns aplenty. A high number of guns allow for a lot of damage from a single salvo. Superior HE damage. Above average HE shell damage, and I think we saw that in the stats. Agile, above average ability to change direction, and I think we saw that from the stats and uh, with the double steering gear configuration. Suzio was built as a light cruiser. Her armor and equipment were on par with heavy cruisers despite her being of a smaller size and displacement. The number of 155 millimeter main guns was increased to 15 to compensate for the lower mass of the shells in comparison to the 203 millimeter main caliber guns of the Washington Naval Treaty cruisers. Entered service in 1937 and there were four ships in the series. Well, that's it for the setup of the ship and the commander. Let's go out in a standard battle and look at some highlights. Right, we're in standard, we're in hotspot. As you saw from the setup of the ship, we did have a double steering gear configuration. So the first thing I was thinking about doing is giving the um, steering of the ship a little bit of a test. Here you can see I'm checking the, uh, the teams, what ships are on the teams and uh, you know maybe what the players are. But uh, here I am, I'm going to um, give full throttle, full speed, and I'm gonna start activating the, uh, the rudders, both sides, to see what kind of steering gear action, because I think ideally what you wanna do is use your steering gears to maneuver out of um, incoming fire from uh, ships that are you know kind of far away uh, that's one one of your defensive measures uh, without that you're just going to get blown out in the middle of the water in general i haven't really been that great at that but at the beginning of this match i am gonna you know give this a try and see how it goes so i'm going to go out here a little bit and try to, I guess, get in harm's way and let ships fire at me and see if the steering gears will allow me to maneuver out of the way. So that's kind of the plan here at the beginning of the match. And from there, we're gonna go on and just see how we do and see if we can win this match. See, there's a Jean Bart, which is out of range. There's an Iowa there, which is definitely in range. He can't see me, so someone else does, and you can see that uh, he's taking a shot at me, but I am trying to do the steering gears to minimize that. And you can see he does look like he's a pretty good target at, at his broadside. And there's uh, someone over in that direction is uh, targeting me, even though at 18 kilometers, I would think that he wouldn't be able to see me, but somebody over there is. And so far, you know, I've been kind of successful at maneuvering around these initial salvos at me. So we're going to do this for a little bit and 
see how we make out and then head for cover behind these islands over here. So you can see I did get one hit on the Iowa. It was a, uh, a shatter. There's uh, four hits, which is pretty good. Uh, no damage yet, so so it's all been uh, all for naught. And here, that was a complete miss. I, I think the eye was moving backwards. I can't really tell from this view what direction the eye was moving at. So here, there's some incoming fire from the other direction over there. And so I, I'm like a sandwich between these two sets of ships, and I'm trying to maneuver with the steering gears to try to. Um, avoid any incoming fire. In previous battles, I haven't really been all that great with the uh, Susia. I've been getting blown out right at the beginning of the battle like this. And uh, this time I'm going to try to um, actively work to minimize that with the steering gears. And we're just going to try taking some pot shots at this Iowa while move around and make it difficult for the red team to get a good. Um, Get a good shot on me and so far you know even though i'm down um half my hit points i i haven't been blown out yet which normally happens at the beginning of the battle so here i'm going to take some uh, torpedo shots at the iowa and we're going to see if we can get uh maybe a lucky hit but um that's enough of that steering gear stuff for me so now i'm going to go hide behind the islands and try to do the standard um cruiser uh, starting a fire behind cover of an island and see how that goes for me. Um, I'm looking pretty good health-wise and I'm starting to rack up some damage with these fires, with this fire, as it turns out right now. I've got one fire and I'm up to 7,700 damage. It's not really that great performance so far, but we're just getting started. So that was a, a collision on the island on purpose because I wanted to uh, move around and back up and try to get a better angle on this Iowa here and see what my torpedoes are doing. It looks like I'm going to get at least one hit, which is good. So this is showcasing the torpedoes of the Susia and, you know, 12,000 damage is pretty darn good. So I'm up to 28,000 already uh, damage and that's one of my better matches in this ship because previously I really have done so poorly and with quick reloading guns and the ease of being able to start a fire this ship does have the potential to devastate uh, quite a few enemy ships there you see I get another fire and I have been in matches with other players with Susias and they are devastating uh, the other team depending on which team they're on and they many times will end up at the top of the leaderboard I haven't been that lucky yet but the ship does have some potential if you're um, skillful enough to play it properly I'm just uh, coming to grips with that myself as you can see so you know 40,000 damage is pretty good 41,000 in climbing so uh, now I'm just taking a bead on this Jean Bart, and we're going to uh, see how many more fires we can inf uh, inflict on that ship. So you can see I'm taking incoming fire. I'm only down to 3,000 health, but climbing because I've activated the heal. And now I'm down to 700, so this is getting uh, pretty bad. Luckily I've got the heal going, so it is climbing a little bit and it's counteracting that but in general uh, I'm kind of in big trouble here so I definitely want to stay you know in the uh, the shelter of these islands I want to stay undercover so now I'm moving around to try to minimize um, I, I guess it's a destroyer that's trying to uh, to get me M maybe not I'm not really sure what kind of a ship is hitting me from that side but I am trying to get out of there to to survive that encounter so I'm up to 66,000 damage and this is up around my high score on the ship at this point so in some ways you know I'm really happy um, the damage uh, the hit points that I have left is kind of dicey though so one good hit and my match is over with 
but you can see how accurate the Susia is at this point. Nine, 97 main gun hits, which is, uh, you know, nothing to uh, sneeze at. That's uh, pretty good output. And um, that just showcases the potential of this ship. Now we've got the last heal going again, so our health is climbing. I'm going to take some more shots at this Alaska. Uh, it's really amazing how accurate these guns are. It could have something to do with uh, Yamato being ranked up to 16, as well as the Inspirations are ranked up fairly high, above 14 for each of the Inspirations. And I think that all, uh, that helps. There's not much left to the Alaska. He's kind of out of range, so I sort of have no, no hope of getting a, a kill there. But you can see I'm up to 74,000 damage already, so this is looking pretty good. And now I'm going to stop because I, I see the uh, turpits there. I'm going to try to get some more torpedoes on that target and see if I could stay under the cover of this island and try to start some more fires. That's basically my plan against battleships with this uh, cruiser. And really, I guess any cruiser when you're going against the battleships is to try to start fires. And there he is, but he's out of range now. So I am uh, going to try to start some more fires on this guy. We're up to 99 uh, main gun hits. That was a miss. That wasn't great. And so I'm being very careful not to expose myself out in the open water because you will get deleted almost immediately once you uh, go out in the open water. See, there's another six hits. These look like some more good hits. Eight more hits. And he's starting to turn, so you don't have to lead him by as much. You just have to aim up a little higher to make sure that uh, you compensate for him turning away. You can see I'm aiming sort of at the bow of the ship. And I am up to over 120 hits already, so that's pretty good for the main guns. So when you have a Havoc where you need main gun hits, uh, this is one of the ships to consider for your main gun hits. And it could be ricochets or anything uh, for a main gun hit. So it doesn't have to cause damage. It just has to hit the, uh, the target. So we're definitely doing that here. We're up to 131 main gun hits already. Eight fires, which is pretty good. We're up to 90,000 damage, which is awesome. This is by far my best performance in the Susia. And we're going to try to get the turpits before he goes behind that island. Got four minutes left in the match. Looks like we might win. 92,000 damage. A Wichita. He doesn't really look like he's aware of my uh, location. His guns are pointing in a different direction. Fire on the so there he was broadside to somebody and kind of got taken out. Uh, not taken out, but a lot of damage got taken off, off his board. And there he's looking like he's a pretty good target. He really is not aware of me because he's turning away from me. There I started another fire. So I'm hoping to get uh, 100,000 damage. That's kind of like a, a nice uh, milestone to hit. Doesn't really look like I'm going to be able to do it. Yeah, he's not really moving away from the uh, island. You can see the intercept point is uh, going toward the opposite direction that I need. Somebody's radar is on. I'm looking around. I don't really see anybody on that side. So it's got to be the Wichita, which I'm assuming has radar. He can't really do anything about me, even though he, kn he knows where I am. Yeah, 
And you can see we're up to 950 points in the match, so we're getting ready to win this match on points. And it's looking like I was able to survive this match pretty good. I've got 4,700 points left. And yeah, so the battle's over with. We, um, we won the match. Victory. 20, 283,000 credits, 96,000 damage, a Dreadnought uh, badge, which is good. But you see, I finished in fourth place, so overall I didn't really get that high on the leaderboard. Well, that's it for the Susia. You kind of see a highlight of all of its better qualities from steering gears, fast reloading guns, a good fire starter. You even got to see a torpedo hit. So if uh, you have any tips on how to play the Susia, please leave comments. This is the Jaguar, and I'll see you on the high seas. Thanks for watching. Hit subscribe if you like it.